if not obsessive don't at all the secret history i think most of creative and introverted souls are born this way either it's nothing or it's consuming your soul and for me i let everything i love consume me i truly try very hard to not be that way not be obsessive not to think but at the end of the day that's who i am but it only works for a minute it inspires me every day though but at the same time it's so very tiring how would things be different in terms of pain and loving if i weren't this obsessive i often think what it's like for people who aren't like this who never wonder never have flashbacks and never dream is it easier or harder to love is it easier or harder to exist is it easier or harder to be happy my phone's right there at the table at a distance i could just stop reading and pick it up and check if your name popped up and enable my triggers or i could keep reading and try my best to forget the heaviness my heart holds i could choose to read and imagine all the beautiful places that this book takes me to lying in the boat vision of warm fire on the river front smell of cinnamon and nutmeg and the making of the hot pastries it's also beautiful and healing and i could stay here for a while and let my heart forget that i'm sad today but i keep looking at my phone that's a dumb length so i pick it up and check one more time but this time I lock it away in another room where I cannot see it so I can rest my mind and stop obsessing and not suffer finished reading this novel is called Alice's War I'll say I'm a slow reader when the stories are simple this story is about a girl Ellie who lives in a village in England and it's set in 1914 a little too simple for my interest to be honest but I love the writing style as it takes my imagination to a very beautiful place by the sea a place with open sky and it's always windy and it feels very healing just to think about it it's written by Emily Sherrett this book comes in four series that's why I think it's so simple and slow so as to build the background I think people who are built for adventures will relate to Ellie so much. I'm not much of an adventurous person, but I do relate to her in a sense when you feel like you don't belong. Ellie is pushed to do things traditionally girls are supposed to do, knitting, being in the kitchen and behaving ladylike, but she is quite the opposite of that. I think most people fail to understand people who are built different, and that's why they always feel like they don't belong and have such hard time. And the thing is easier for everyone else, and I guess in a sense it is. She has a very close and beautiful relationship with her father and not so much with her mother who is an unkind always in a bad mood kind of woman. She loves her husband dearly but no one else really and it seems her strange behavior is due to grief of some kind. Ellie is always scared of being at home with her mother cuz it's either only two things her mother's claustrophobic silence or fight and only her toddler brother for company who she has to look after at such a young age. Days are unbearable for her. She wants to do something 
something that has purpose and is useful that makes her feel alive. Most days she just feels lonely, stuck in doors, nothing much to do, with no one to meet, longing for good company. I do sympathize with her and I feel for her deeply. I think a lot of complicated feelings get simplified. If you find your purpose and do what you truly love and you're allowed to be yourself by your closed ones. Today I'll be reading you The Wolf and the Seven Kids. The Wolf and the Seven Kids Once upon a time, there was an old goat. She lived in a forest with her seven little kids. The goat loved all her kids very dearly. One day before going into the forest to fetch food, the goat called all her kids and said, Dear kids, there is a bad wolf who lives near our house. He has a rough voice and black paws. I am going into the forest, so don't open the door for anyone. The little kids replied, Don't worry, mom. We will be careful. So the mother goat left her house without any burden on her mind. It was not long before the wolf came to know that the little kids were alone at home. He had been looking for this opportunity for many days roaming around the goat's house. After some time, the wolf came to the door of the goat's house and knocked at it. Who's there? asked the little kids from inside. Your mother, replied the wolf. But the little kids recognized the wolf hearing his rough voice and said, We will not open the door. You are not our mother. Our mother has a soft and gentle voice. You have a terrible voice. You are the wolf. The wolf went away. He went to a shopkeeper and bought himself a piece of chalk. He ate it so that his voice might become soft like a goat's voice. The wolf came back again knocking at the door of the goat's house. He repeated, open the door children. Your mother is here. But he had laid one of his black paws on the windowsill. The kids caught sight of the wolf's paw and said, we will not open the door. You are not our mother. Our mother does not have a black paw like yours. You are the wolf. Go away at once from here. Hearing this, the wolf ran to a bakery. There he found a bowl full of kneaded flour. He rubbed some dough on his paws and ran to a miller. Reaching there, the wolf put some dry flour on his paws. Now his paws looked white like those of a goat. So he once again set out for the goat's house. The villain knocked at the door for a third time and called out in a soft voice, Children, your mother has got something nice for you. Open the door. Hearing the soft voice, the little kids cried out, First, show us your paw so that we may know that you are our loving mother. The wolf put his white paw on the window seal. The little kids, when they saw the wolf's white paw, thought it to be the paw of their mother and believed that whatever the wolf had said was true. So they opened the door. The wolf entered the house immediately. Terrified to see him, the kids rushed in all directions for safety. One jumped under the table, the second into the bed, the third into fireplace, the fourth into the kitchen, the fifth into the cupboard, and the sixth inside the tub, and the seventh into the clock case. But the wolf was able to find them all. He swallowed them down his throat one after the other. However, he could not find the youngest kid that had hidden safely in the clock case. After gulping the six kids, the wolf left the goat's house and went to a nearby meadow. There he lay down under a shady tree and soon fell fast asleep. Not long after, the mother goat came back from the forest. She was shocked at what she saw. The door was wide open and everything was scattered in the house. Not seeing her kids around, the mother goat called out to them by one name after the other. The youngest kid, hearing his mother's voice, cried out, Oh mother dear, I'm here, hidden in the clock case. The youngest kid came out of the clock, told his mother all that had happened. Both of them hugged each other and cried aloud. Then they went out to look for the wolf. When the the goat and her kid came to the meadow. They found the wolf under the tree snoring loudly. The mother goat looked at him and saw that something was moving inside his stomach. Good God, cried the mother goat. I think my children are alive inside the wolf's stomach. She asked the youngest kid to fetch scissors, a needle and thread. Very carefully, the mother goat cut open the wolf's belly with the scissors. She had hardly made the first cut when one little kid popped his head out. As she cut the wolf's stomach further, all the six kids jumped out one by one. Everyone was safe. They embraced their dear mother. 
Go and look for some big stones," said the mother goat. "We will fill the monster's stomach with them while he is still asleep." The seven kids quickly brought several stones. They put as many stones in the wolf's stomach as it could hold. The wolf was in so deep a slumber that he did not move. So the mother goat hurriedly sewed up his stomach again. When the wolf woke up and got onto his legs, he felt very heavy. The stones in his stomach made him thirsty as well. So he decided to go to a nearby well to quench his thirst. But when the wolf walked, the stones in his stomach knocked against each other and made him feel very uncomfortable. He could not walk properly. Somehow staggered along to reach the well. Reaching the well, the wolf leaned over the water. to have a drink but because of the heavy stones he could not maintain his balance fell into the well and was drowned the mother goat and her seven little kids were watching all this from their hiding place when they heard the cries of the drowning wolf they exclaimed in joy the cruel wolf is dead and the danger to our lives is over now they all lived freely and happily ever after